if you do your own research, you go on Google or you go on uh, Google Bard or ChatGPT or wherever uh, on the internet and you type out the following question, what are the most important open questions in science? So very frequently, the number one open question in science is, what is the universe made of? We know that only about 5% of the universe is made of ordinary matter, which means atoms and molecules and particles. And these are the atoms that make up stars, planets, and living things, including you and me. The rest is made of, of dark matter and dark energy, but we don't know what they are or how they work. And we may not, never know what they are because um, they're not atomic. If something is not atomic and we are made of atoms, we can't interact with it. So 5% of the universe is atomic, of which 99.9% .9 is actually invisible interstellar dust. And uh, the visible universe with 2 trillion galaxies, 706 trillion stars, un uncountable um, planets is um, actually less than 0.01% of the universe. 0.01%. So uh, particles have a dual nature. Um, they can appear as particles with units of mass and energy, but they're also probability waves in mathematical space. So the question, what is the universe made of, assumes that there is substance called matter. And that's a name we as humans have given to human perceptual activity okay which is a very narrow band of uh, the visual spectrum or any spectrum you know of experience so what we call matter is a combination of um, the alchemy of five senses and our interpretation of those five senses in other words the first question, what is the universe made of, is the wrong question, okay? It assumes the existence of matter. Nobody has experienced a substance of matter. You only experience your own perceptions, and they are, of course, filtered through the conditioned mind, which is a modification of consciousness or awareness. So the first open question in science is wrong. It's a wrong question. It cannot be answered. The universe is made of nothing. Okay. So then, of course, uh, why does it look like everything else? That's the second major open question in science. And uh, that question is, uh, uh, what uh, is the biological basis of consciousness? And again, if you do your research, you will see that um, um, this is a question that assumes that the brain, which is a physical object, uh, produces consciousness. So the experience of being aware and of also feeling emotions, etc., is basically an assumption in science that uh, consciousness arises from the physical matter of the brain. But if I've just said that matter is a concept uh, for human perceptual activity, then uh, the second question, again, is the wrong question. The two questions contradict each other. The first question, what is the universe made of, assumes that there's matter. Then the second question, how does the brain produce consciousness, assumes that a material object called the brain actually produces matter. So, you know, these two questions contradict themselves. Actually, Rupert Spira saying similar, something very similar at a science and non-duality conference. You have one question which is wrong and an assumption then you have the second question, which is based on the wrong first question. 
So both these questions are actually wrong and we will never have a scientific answer to them in the way science is currently framed. And this has led to other open questions in science. Are we alone in the universe? There are billions of galaxies in the universe, each with billions of stars. It seems statistically likely that there must be other life out there somewhere. But of course, we haven't found any because it may be in a different frequency domain of consciousness. Um, and then, of course, there are other open questions in science. What makes us human? What distinguishes us from other animals? Is our intelligence, our language, our capacity for culture uniquely human? And, you know, the understanding of what it means to be human is still a, a, a open question. And of course, then there are other open questions which are similarly related. How did life begin? We've come a long way in understanding the chemistry and biology of life, but we still don't know how the first living organisms arose from non-living matter. Okay, these questions are all interrelated and I can say the wrong questions. You will not answer them scientifically based on the current assumptions of science. So let's see if there's an alternative on the current assumptions of science. And the alternative is consciousness is the fundamental ground of existence, number one. Number two, consciousness is non-local. It is not in space-time. Number three, it modifies itself as experience. And experience is in the form of sensations, perceptions, feelings, and thoughts. So what we call a sensation is a modified form of consciousness, knowing itself as a sensation. So to the five perceptions, sound, touch, sight, taste, and smell, are modified forms of consciousness knowing itself as that particular sound, as that particular sensation, as that particular perception. So what we call mind is thoughts, feelings, memories, um, and insight and intuition and creativity. Uh, and these are modifications of consciousness. It's some modes of knowing and experience in consciousness. And then, of course, perceptions, which are also modes of knowing in human consciousness. And uh, they're all very limited modes of knowing. Uh, human perception is a narrow band of um, the electrochemical, electromagnetic field. And um, our thoughts and feelings and emotions are also modes of knowing and experience. So consciousness is modifying itself in modes of knowing and experience and these modes of knowing and experience include what we call the mind as sensations and as thoughts and as feelings and what we call the physical body and the world as perceptions and how we interpret them and if that is the case then all these questions in science are wrong how did life begin life is consciousness and consciousness not being in space-time had no beginning. It may be that it goes through cycles um, and expresses itself as instruments of knowing and experience, which we call biological organisms. That biological organisms are just instruments of knowing and experience, but life itself is pure consciousness, field of infinite possibilities, with a subset of probability fields and transcendent without cause immeasurable formless borderless infinite irreducible spaceless timeless and non-conceivable and imperceivable you can't nothing that can be perceived or conceived but yet without it there's no perception there's no conception, there's no models, there's no experience that we can call mind or body of the or universe. So life is just consciousness as a transcendent field of possibilities. Never began. It modified itself in evolution as 
biological organisms and biological organisms are modes of knowing and experience and every mode of knowing and experience is misleading it's a magical lie no perception actually is true or perceptions as my friend don hoffman would say are um, uh, are basically um, evolutionary uh, developments for fitness for survival for reproduction they do not give access to truth so nothing perceivable or conceivable is true nothing perceivable or conceivable is true um, what is true is the source of everything that we call conceivable and perceivable which is in itself imperceivable and cannot be conceived so once we take that assumption that there's no physical matter that's a human construct um, for human experience and modes of knowing and experience in human awareness then the answer is the you know to these questions is the universe is made of nothing number one number two there's no biological basis of con for consciousness biology is an experience and a construct in consciousness how did life begin it did not it's transcendent and timeless as a field of possibilities and probabilities what makes us human the very good question is our capacity for self-awareness and transcendence and our ability to create constructs is there life elsewhere in the universe all probability there is because uh, uh, the universe being a human construct in a field of possibilities contains infinite uh, uh, such uh, dreamscapes in uh, uh, in which we are all basically fictional characters for the time being so um, there could be infinite universes after all infinity is never compromised um, uh, even as it expresses itself in finite forms so my friends these are some of the most important open questions in science science does not have an answer because science itself is an activity in consciousness okay human constructs are created in consciousness science um, is based on um, theory theories are created in consciousness uh, in the human mind particularly um, science is also based on experiments that are designed in consciousness and science is based on observations that also occur in consciousness so to say that there will be a scientific answer to these open questions is a contradiction in itself because science is a byproduct of consciousness you cannot explain a dream with a dream think about this and let me know what your thoughts are.